Well, hey guys, welcome once again to the Next Man Up podcast. I am your host, Mark Stanifer, along with my buddy, John Gregory, and we are both honored to be with you for another episode. You've heard me say this before. I'll say it again. Whether you're joining us today for the first time or you've been with us for a while, we're grateful you have chosen to be part of the community that is about being and raising healthy and godly men and if you haven't checked us out on the web, thenextmanup.com is where you can find us there. If you need to get a hold of us, send us comments, feedback, questions, even episode suggestions. You can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com. John, welcome. Good to see you again, my friend. It's good to see you. I'm going to give a disclaimer right up front. Okay. Uh-oh. I've only had ice cream one day this week. So I might not be up to par. Okay. I'm just going to get in and tell you that. <laughs> I'm a little... You're off your conditioning game? Right. My my dairy sweetness is low. Okay. So I just want you to know, it's it's been a struggle not having ice cream every day. Well, I, I'm sure our listeners appreciate your first world. I mean, your... <laughs> you, uh, the, oh, it is. The, oh, I know that. It's a first world problem. <laughs> I'm just going to say it out loud. In case I just fall on my face in this episode, well, if I'm blaming it on ice cream. If you do that, I, I will happily carry on at least to the closing, uh, which may come pretty quickly. Because <laughs> anyway, I'm sure the listeners appreciate the way you're able to gut it out, to mm. grit, and to to bring it, even if you're a little bit off today. Well, you can guarantee I will be making a trip to the store later. Well, you got you got me hungry now. You know what we've discovered here? Um, there's a there's a chain of gas stations called Sheets. Oh yeah, and they've recently expanded into the Columbus market. We now have one that's relatively close. Who knew their milkshakes were so good? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. It's worth a stop. Well, we don't have those here, but I know people who lived in states where they are, and they they swear by. By that place. I, I will have to tell you this. Sorry, here we go down the ice cream lane. I met someone from Ohio who didn't know what graders was. Oh, that's a tragedy. I was like, what? How do I know about graders and you don't? You know, that's unfortunate. And, well, and, now he knows. And, and, <laughs> well, and so, so great. Uh, you've been able to enlighten him and expand his ice cream horizons. I should right. also note that. Neither graders nor sheets are sponsors of this episode. Although, this is <laughs> although, should anyone be listening that it, that has some influence there, we would be open to Bring it. yes, Bring it. yes, exactly. All ice cream vendors, yes, yes. So I have a question for you. Okay, is there something in your life that you just can't help but fix? Is there one thing or two things or, or, or something that, that when you experience it, you just, you can't resist the, the temptation, the invitation to fix? All right. Well, two things come to my mind. I mean, back in the day it was, you know, the list was long, but, uh, the, <laughs> she won't be listening to this. So I could just call it out. I'm calling myself out, uh, the last church position that I held, when I went in Judy's office, it like every time I went in that office, there were staples on the floor, mm. like like they had, I don't know, found their way out of the stapler, like unused know. staples, not like, like no like, used, like oh. just single little staples on the floor. Okay, like they fell off the desktop or whatever. It's like, how do these staples keep getting here? And it's not good for the vacuum cleaner. You know, that's what goes through my brain. So I'm constantly picking up the staples off her carpeted floor. And she just looked at it. And finally she knew like, that's just, that's how the staples get off my carpet is John comes in my office. <laughs> Somebody cleans for her. That's yeah. So there's one example. Another one that comes to my mind is it was quite hilarious. 
Uh, I'm an Enneagram one and I have a friend who's the Enneagram two and she loves all the analytics and everything about Enneagram. And I had sent her a video. I don't remember what the video was, but it showed a turned over, a fallen over orange cone, like in a roadway. I don't remember why I sent that to her, but I, I sent it to her. It's sort of like, you know, one of these things doesn't belong here. It had nothing to do with the orange cone. Mm. Her response to me was, I bet you picked up that orange cone, didn't you? <laughs> and it's like, not the point, but yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. She's calling you out. She did. She called me out. Yeah. That's now, fun. I know we shared this, so what? what's your deal? <laughs> What can you not avoid? So initially when I was thinking about this question, there wasn't, there wasn't anything really good that came to mind, but he, here's, here is one that is totally appropriate. Nobody in my family knows how to load the dishwasher correctly. <laughs> so I am constantly coming behind them and fixing it. You can't stack a bowl on top of another bowl and expect the top bowl to be clean. This is true. That, right? That's exactly true. How, how, many, how many containers for the silverware generally are in the tray? Five, six, maybe seven different compartments in, in the tray where you can organize and stack. Your, why does all the silverware end up in one? Why do mm. we have all this silverware that is not equally and evenly divided so that it can be equally and evenly cleaned. Why do we have these types of bowls on the bottom tray in two spots and on the top uh -huh. tray in two spots? Just put, put <laughs> them in the right spot, people. Do you have labels? I don't have labels. And I haven't taken them through like an orientation video and a oh, training okay. video on how to load the... They're just supposed to know, John. Well, I was about to say, had you done that, then we, we know you really have a problem, you know? <laughs> like Sheldon Cooper lives in your house. Yeah. I, I, I didn't expect to get so animated, but, <laughs> but it is... It, I mean, that's the thing for me that yeah. it, at least immediately comes to mind and it's... It's relevant. It's something that I see, Enneagram one as well, that is not quote unquote right. And mm -hmm. e even that is negotiable, right? Sure, uh, sure. But from my standpoint, just through my lens, it's not done right. It needs mm -hmm. to be done right. And so I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna take care of it and do it right. I'm gonna it fix requires it. Requires fixing. That's, That's right. right. And and who better than a dude? that's an Enneagram one that's looking out for the benefit of the team or the road crew or whoever to, to just step in and fix it. Just do it. That's right. Cause if we don't, you, you worry that it's never going to get fixed or it's certainly not going to get done right. Of course. So yeah, the world needs us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now that we've completely amused and, um, or abused, <laughs> to, deluded ourselves <laughs> into this thought that the right. world needs us as fixers. Right. <laughs> Let, let's take a bit of a serious turn and, and and tease out this idea of fixaholics. So so that was that was your term. Let let's mm -hmm. let's give you props and credit for this. What was coming to mind as as you were thinking about that term and 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 the message that you wanted to capture within this episode? Well, I remember thinking about I don't remember what I was thinking about, but I was on a run one morning and I must have been thinking about a situation that either I was trying to fix or I knew part of the problem was someone was trying to fix something that they probably didn't really need to be trying to fix. And it just, the thought of labeling those of us <laughs> any gram when we can't help ourselves as fixaholics, like that's, that's helpful, mm. actually. Mm. It's actually helpful. And I've used the term, I think I shared it maybe in the first episode that I, I joined you on, 
that I'm a recovering fixer. Fixer, right. And that's just a term that when I've you know, read that in, in a book about coaching a few years ago, that it, it's just stuck with me. And interestingly enough, yesterday I spoke with uh, a potential new coaching client and uh, off the cuff, I, I, I just asked him, you know, something like, what do you think would be some uh, areas of your life you would, it would benefit you to have coaching in? And he listed two things. And the second one was, I've realized that I've, I want to try to fix everything. Mm. It's like, oh, well, welcome to the party, buddy. Mm, mm. You know, you're a guy that I think it is part of being a guy for a lot of us. But there's there's where my thoughts, there's a lot of different thoughts, but that's where my thought came from and how helpful it could be, you know, to like you go to the other aholic meetings, you know, hi, I'm John, I'm a fixaholic. Just to have that kind of therapeutic session here could be useful. So as Enneagram ones, this is this is not an episode on any Enneagram is not a sponsor of this episode either. <laughs> right. Um, so, so we 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 get this tendency to want to continuously improve or or perfect. But to your point, I think this is also something that is is wired into guys to act and to move and to to change, to fix. Like there's lots of different ways to describe it, lots of different words to describe it. And so I I would suggest that it is a it's a healthy desire. Mm-hmm. Sure. But like any strength that we might have, we can take it to an extreme to where it becomes unhealthy. And, and a lot of that is if we're not even aware of what we're doing, right? Here's here's that theme again, change starts with awareness. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, let's recognize and celebrate the the desire and that wiring inside us as as guys, because there are times when things need to be fixed, we, we could spend the next 20 minutes just coming up with random examples of times mm-hmm. where guys stepped in and, and fixed. But I think where we're going here is not every time does it require the husband or the father or the man to, to just step in and fix. No doubt. And for sure, your wife and your kids don't always want you to. Mm. Please accept that on their behalf. If you're a wife and you're listening, I'm sure you're like, you may not cuss, but you'll be like, amen. (laughs) Say it again, John. Your wife and your kids do not always want you to fix it. Yeah. So, so, so let's, let's make sure we're being clear here Mm -hmm. and describe a, a scenario or two or some examples that represent this fixaholism or the unhealthy, the unhealthy expression of this tendency or desire to, to want to better or, or to fix, like said more simply, what does unhealthy look like? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking about a clip from a, a TV episode that I watched a couple of weeks ago, and I won't get into the, to the weeds of this, but what happened in this clip was the son, an adult son, chose to take what he perceived and understood that his dad had told him, some information his dad had told him, and he went and maneuvered and manipulated behind the scenes, didn't tell his dad that he was doing this uh, with his dad's physician to sort of dictate how his dad was going to be told some things about his own health. Mm. His dad, that plays out and that happens and it looks like everything's great and wonderful, but then his dad being who he is, he went behind, he's, you know, the son didn't fall far from the tree. He went (laughs) behind the son and found out what the son had had done and he was pissed so this scene that happens is the dad telling the son how disappointed he was. And his statement was, 
not every situation requires a fixer. Mm. And this is a gentleman who in the, in the series, he's the police uh, chief of New York. And it, it, it's like, well, I'm pretty sure I know that. He's like, his dad said, no, no, you don't. So that, if we've moved into a place where we're trying to manipulate something that no one's asked us to do, uh, where we think we're doing good for this other person, but they didn't ask us to do that, that is an unhealthy usage of this desire. And and I, desire is true, but it, it's an unhealthy usage of this trait or gift, whatever you want to call it, that, that positive spin that we look at it and say, well, it can get turned into something that's not helpful. I was never a Boy Scout so I can't speak from firsthand experience, but I was very much aware of the uh, the boxcar races mm-hmm. and the the kit and the process to design the kit and to you know actually race the cars. And as you were talking, I'm I'm picturing I'm picturing the boy who's kind of struggling a bit with the mechanics or the the engineering of that that car and or not quite doing it the way dad thinks it it uh-huh. could or should be done. Uh-huh. And dad just steps in and takes over and says watch. Watch right. watch me do it. And I, I can go back into my own story and, and pull out examples. You may be able to pull examples from your own story too, but that's one that came to mind of, you know, it, it doesn't have to be the, the Boy Scout boxcar race context. Pick whatever context it is where dad has an opportunity to help and guide or to just step in and say, you loaded the dishwasher wrong, son. Go go away. I'll fix it. Um, right. In that scenario, the son's like, uh, uh, cool, I'm out. Don't care. I did it, I, <laughs> exactly. I did it wrong on purpose. It, I, could, I won this game. <laughs> right. um, but for something that the, the boy may be more interested in, like the, that unhealthy expression is to just step in and to metaphorically or maybe literally push the kid aside, push the boy mm-hmm. aside, and, and and in effect communicate to the boy, I know more than you, I can do this better than you, and I need to do this right because, because you're not doing it. Like even hearing myself say that, it stirs the emotion in me of being... Uh, of being less than, of being excluded Mm -hmm. and like, I'm not good enough for my dad in, in this moment. And like that, that's maybe a bit of a, an more extreme reaction, but even, Mm. you know, at 49, I'm, I'm, as I'm telling a made up story, I'm feeling this. Well, and I even look at it from another angle. The potential is there that you've, you would miss an opportunity to help back to that boxcar type scenario to miss an opportunity to help the son learn, man, a lot of things. Uh, all right. So your best doesn't mean you're going to win or he just totally miserably fails at the whole thing. Well, there's something that could be learned from that. So there's, there's missed opportunities that happen when we step in and fix things just to keep, you know, for really our own benefit, to keep the world running the way it should. Right. Well, man, think what's possible when those other things get uh, brought to the surface that eventually are going to be brought to the surface anyway. I think you're right on it. Like that whole category of missed opportunity when you just step in to fix it's missed opportunity to connect and to understand the other person better. It's a missed opportunity for them to learn and grow. We've, we've talked about this before on, on the show uh, about letting your boys fail, letting mm-hmm. your kids fail and letting them fail in the, the safety of the home and the context of the home when the consequences are a little bit smaller versus they got to learn what it's like to fail when the consequences are bigger. 
So giving them the opportunity to learn from a mistake or, or a fail, if you will, um, there's, there's the opportunity for them to, to like grow in the process of doing it themselves. You know, uh, we started somewhere as, as dads, as men, we, we didn't start today and gain our expertise. We started a long time ago and we started with not really knowing anything. Someone either showed us or we had to, we had to kind of figure it out as we went. When you step in and fix, you rob your boy, you rob your other children, whoever it is, you rob them of the potential of that, that experience of iterating through mm-hmm. and, and, and building their own hands-on knowledge. I, I think just that, that whole idea of missed opportunity represents this, this concept well. Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw a different thought in there because this is from my own story. I didn't know until mm, I'm going to say my early forties that my, I had a need and coming in and fixing things was solving a need that I, I didn't know how to verbalize the need, but what it ended up doing that was harmful to myself was creating a codependency type relationship between me and whoever I was trying to make sure everything was okay for them, Mm -hmm. so to speak, in my brain. Mm -hmm. But what was happening was not healthy (laughs) for me or for them, that I, I had this need that I had to keep everything perfect. And that was all driven from this, well, I can. This is my role. I'm the fix it guy. So I should come in here and and no one asked me to do that. So that I think there's that's a different kind of angle there again, but I think there's another potential harm for ourselves that if we're not careful, we can fall into the trap. And that uh well, waking up to that sooner than later is gonna be good. Yeah. Well, it's, it's that awareness of, is my natural inclination what's most needed here? Or is there a bigger need or a better solution? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we, we, we talked about this a while back. If, if fixing represents the tool of a hammer, then we're always looking for a nail to go pound. But what if there's a better solution in this situation? But I, I think... I think we as as men, as fathers, as husbands, we need to be willing to let go of the outcome and and the the responsibility of the solution in order to be able to see a second option or a third option or a fourth option or to to see the opportunity that is presented here for the boy or for the other person. Like this principle, this principle applies wherever you lead, right? Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. just leading oh, as yeah. a as a father, um, no. but un- unless we're willing to pull back on our need to be right, our need to control the situation, our need to to manage to a certain outcome, then we will miss this opportunity of what could happen in the moment when when we cooperate or we let go or or mm-hmm. we give the ownership and responsibility for the solution, for the fixing to the other person. Maybe maybe the situation does need to be fixed, but we're not the right person to fix it. There's Mm -hmm. There's a better person to do the fixing for all and then some of the reasons we've just stated. And you just led me to where I, I want to make sure we don't miss the, this point. Sometimes the fixer is not human. Mm. And we get caught up that we, you know, we've, we're living so horizontally that we forget to pause and look up. And of all fixers, <laughs> we need to make sure God is involved in the fixing of everything. 
and we Enneagram fixaholics, we're the worst at forgetting, maybe even not acknowledging at times that God needs to get in here and do what only he can do. Mm. I, I, I might can do something that's really good, but I can't do something that's impossible. Right. And I, there's a missed opportunity again. I might be keeping God from being able to do something only he can do because I stepped in too quick. That's a sobering thought. With good intent and exercising God-given strengths mm-hmm. and tendencies, you can actually get in the way. Yeah. Oh, there's biblical examples of that, right? Sure. <laughs> right. You're right. <laughs> oh, Abraham comes to mind. Right. Right. It's like, okay, I think I can fix this. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Abraham. <laughs> How did that work out for you? <laughs> right. Let's talk to Hagar. Yeah, I think that that biblical reference, the the different characters, the different stories that could come to mind that, you know, we could we could go back and forth on. It's it is a good reminder that sometimes the fixing isn't going to happen from a human standpoint. And maybe not even happen in a human lifetime. And that's okay, because ultimately, as healthy and godly men, we know that there is a divine fixer with a divine and perfect plan and timeline. And it's it's something that we can trust. We can we can just trust that he's got it. That's a that's a phrase that I've heard him say to me repeatedly over the last couple of years. Just trust me. I got it. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got this. I got it. Just, just trust me. And so, guys, I don't know. I don't know where that lands with you. I, I don't know if you're like, yeah, right on, man. You give it to those fixers or, or if, you know, if, if we're stepping on your toes and you're looking for your steel toed boots here. Um, but as I, as I often say at the end of these episodes, our, our goal, our hope is that this isn't just entertainment, but it's, it's inspiration and it's a challenge to, to do and to be different. There is a lot that we can accomplish by growing, growing our awareness, growing our self-discipline, leading ourselves better. There's a lot that we can't accomplish and it's out of our hands, but there's, there's a lot that's within our control. And if you struggle with this tendency to fix, then I just invite you to spend a couple minutes reflecting on where are you most likely to step in? When are you most likely to step in? Where are those triggers, those people or those situations that that you just can't help but step in and fix and and grow your awareness of what's happening there. And then just experiment, small steps, experiment with holding back, holding your tongue, not stepping forward, letting somebody else step into that space. These are small steps that you can experiment with, you can try, you can reflect on, but they could represent that that little flake of snow that starts rolling down from the top of the hill that ultimately becomes an avalanche of change and momentum in a, in a healthier and a stronger and a better direction for you. I don't know where you find yourself in this episode, but I invite you to not let this just be information, but to take this into a transformational step, whatever that step is for you. Okay, that's enough kind of on my high horse, sermonizing, preaching. John, any, any final thoughts as, uh, as we, we wrap this one up? Well, I will be fixing my ice cream problem. Okay. <laughs> that is well within your control. And, and in fact, yes. really something that only you can fix. So <laughs> go. A, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe God would have an ice cream truck to show up at my front door. <laughs> I don't know. I, I could pray for that and see if it happens. Will Door- that would be a first. Will DoorDash do ice cream? I don't know. Like, could well, I? I mean, Chick Fil A delivers, so I could order a shake. I mean, if it got really desperate, there you go. 
Well, I'm just thinking maybe somebody else can step in and, and throw oh, you sure. throw you an ice and cream fix, bone and fix help. it for me. That's right. Yes. That's right. Well, listeners, thank you for letting us have a little fun. Thank you for engaging with us on this topic and uh, for your willingness to continue to be part of this community that is about raising and being healthy and godly men. We don't take you for granted. We appreciate you being here and we're honored for the opportunity to serve you in this capacity once again. We will be back next week. So until then, adios. To send us your comments or questions, you can email us at feedback at the nextmanup.com. The theme music is by Jacob Stanifer at Jacob Stanifer Music, and this show is part of the NRT Podcast Network.